Hey there, what's up? Welcome to Let's Talk IT Careers. This is episode nine. Its title is What It Takes to Work From Home. My name's Tim Warner. I hope that the audio video lag thing I had in the previous episode is sorted. If not, I apologize. And quite honestly, I envisioned this series as an audio podcast anyway. The graphics are really just window dressing, and who the heck wants to look at my mug anyway? All right, today's topic is working from home. This is something that's becoming increasingly prevalent over the years, at least for specific markets. Well, we're talking about information technology. That is a relevant market. Why is that? I found that in information technology, which is considered knowledge work as opposed to, say, body work, like roofing, for instance, knowledge work makes the world flat. I work with people not only all around the United States where I live, but in other countries across different continents all around the globe. And I can communicate with, say, my friend Oren Thomas in Australia directly on the opposite side of the world as easily as I can make a call to my wife or call somebody down the street. You see what I mean? I've had the great fortune of being able to work remotely for over 10 years now, so I have quite a bit of experience in this regard. If there's one thing I can say overall is that not everybody is cut out to be a remote employee. If you have a strong need for social interaction, face-to-face interaction with others, you want to think long and hard about how you approach working remotely. I've worked from my home for the first five years or so, and then when our daughter was born and got to be a certain age, things started getting pretty darn loud at home, and my work as a trainer requires silence. Otherwise, I've got external noise bleeding into my recordings. So the rest of that time has been spent, I've spent that time in a small office here in Nashville. And as a matter of fact, I'm in the process of moving to another office because the building I'm in now was purchased and the new landlords are booting us all out of here. So anyway, let me give you a series of requirements. This is just the world according to Tim Warner. Take this for what it's worth. In my experience, what it takes to work from home is, first of all, professional passion. I know that passion is one of those $10 buzzwords that can make you, it's like a fingernail on chalkboard thing for many, and I understand that, but it fits here. If you love the work that you do, then most of the time you don't dread it. You actually look forward to doing it. And I submit that if you're in a line of work that's not fulfilling, be it IT or something else, and you're working from home, this can make a particularly painful combination. It's like living with the enemy. Your work office at home and your desk can become a source of great stress and anxiety. I'm not laughing. I've actually been there before, unfortunately, and it's not fun. Another requirement is focus. What do I mean by this? You need the ability to filter out distractions. This is one of the separators between somebody who's a good fit for remote work versus somebody who's not. There's lots of shiny objects at home. You need laser sharp concentration. I mean, I've got that fortunately. And in my situation that I talked about a moment ago when I worked from home, I was cool with my wife and daughter banging around the house. It only was a question of when their volume level was disruptive to my recording that I moved. I was cool. I can pretty much work with any kind of jackhammering going on outside. That's not something everybody has, though. I recognize that. I like to listen to ambient music. It's nice to have it running in the background. Other people are just the opposite. They really want true silence. Whatever helps you focus is what I think is a good idea. Next requirement for working from home successfully is discipline. Now, your morning commute is going to be non-existent when you work from home. For me, when I am working out of my home proper, the biggest traffic jam I'm likely to come across is tripping over my cats who really, really, really want to be fed. Now, that is a double-edged sword, this morning commute being non-existent because shiny object system. Jeez, there's a movie I've really been wanting to watch. Maybe I can just do that and then do my work. Or maybe I want to go for a run. That's always a good, healthy, healthful thing. Well, at the same time, I've got a hard deadline. It can be easier to get distracted when you have all of your favorite toys lying around. So to help 
If you're working from home, have a defined workspace. Now, I have, I've worked with some people who live in a small home or small apartment to where they couldn't get an actual room. I've had colleagues use their closet as their workspace. I've had others who lived in such a small area that they had to demarcate a part of their apartment room, like a studio apartment, like a corner is their workspace. But it's really important to have that so that you have a mental partition between work and home. That can be a really big challenge. For me, when I worked at home, I would close my home office door when I finished the workday, and I would leave that door closed as a visual cue that I'm not going back in there until tomorrow morning. Now, also for business purposes, you, at least here in the United States, you need to have that home office 100% devoted to your work in order to qualify for tax deductions. So keep that in mind as well. Finally, we have the requirement of cooperation. Cooperation with those with whom you live or those who you live with. What's that? This is something up with which I will not put the question of prepositions at the end of sentences. Anyway, a little geek attack there. Bottom line is everybody in your household needs to be on the same page. Otherwise, there's going to be some resentment flying all over the place. They need to be able to respect your workplace habits. And that's difficult with pets because my parrot, for instance, doesn't know or doesn't care whether I'm on a super important Skype call or recording a training video. My wife with her honey-do list, sometimes those list items are so important to her that boom. My daughter, daddy, daddy. I mean, these are good distractions, but they're distractions nonetheless. You may have to get an external office in that case. There's nothing wrong with humbly asking your employer for some financial assistance to make that case. But quite honestly, there's been years where, in fact, I'm doing it now, where I pay for my office happily out of pocket, even though a good portion, the majority of the time that I spend there is for my day salary job with Pluralsight. It still is worth it to me for many reasons, not the least of which is the work-home separation, the work-life balance that I actually discussed in the previous episode of this series. So I hope you found this helpful. As always, thanks for participating. Tim Warner is my name. Twitter, I'm at techtrainertim, web, techtrainertim.com. My training work is at pluralsight.com. Take good care. See you around the bend.